First of all, Sid, thank you very much to invite me. It's always, uh, it's, I always enjoy try the creation of, uh, of the creator behind these fine spirits that we're trying today. Um, Sometimes, you know, people ask me, says, Maestro, you know, would you look when you taste something in the way of a cocktail, in the way of fine spirits? And I always say, first of all, think, you know, shut your eyes and start to dream. And that's what we do. We are actually dreaming of what we're going to encounter. And uh, I go back in my time and I start to think about what this spirits or this cocktail gives me, what does the creator try to tell me? And uh, I started this industry in 1966, so for sure I taste a few spirits in my career and a and few cocktails. And I start to think about from my childhood, right, what was my experience that I encounter? So, the sooner I taste something, and guys, I want you to do that. Think about your lips. Your lips is your childhood in you. So the sooner you start to taste something, start to think about the experience of your life. Because uh, tasting something that is great, it is a journey. So I start to think about from the beginning to the end. So my lips is my childhood in me. So the sooner I taste something, I start to grow up. Then the spirits, the drink, goes in my middle palate. And as it goes in my middle palate, I start to be a youth, a young person. And you, around the table, there's a lot of young, young people. You start to think about, I know it all. Because my middle palate it is the experience of our life because we start to pick up every flavors that we can percept, we can think about. So it is, what does it tell me? Is, uh, does it have a hint of, of note of orange? Is it earthy? Is it rich? It's got toughness, it's chocolate. Start to think about what you try, all right? And really start to put your shoe, your, your feet in the shoes of the, of the creator. Does he talk to you? And in the middle palate, you start to be pulled apart. And as a young person, you really want to know everything that there is to know about the life experience. And then you grow up and you reach a certain age, maturity. And there is the aftertaste. So in the aftertaste, what does he tell you? What that spirit tells you? Does he talk to you? Is he linger? Is he long, all right? Or is he short, right? That means you haven't given me the character that I want. Remember, like a great cocktails, right? The spirit it is the canvas of anything that you create. So the better you choose the canvas, the longer the journey will last. I always say I am a, a Michelangelo work. Yes, you can laugh, but whatever I do, Whatever I create, I try to choose the best spirits that I think it is the perfect match for what I create. Because remember, I can be the Michelangelo work, but if I don't choose the right canvas, what's going to happen? That my work of art will not last, right? So think about, you know, many of the, of the work that you see of Michelangelo still stand because he chose the right canvas. So, you know, when I started really truly work in this country in 1982, or oh, really, actually, I should go back in 1966, in my bar, I remember there was only very few bottles. You know, you could find 20 to 30 bottles behind that bar. Now, if you do come in my bar, you will see that there is a harem of spirits. I have over 600 type of spirits, right? start from the young and go as far back as 1700, all right? And we in our bar, we try to understand everything that we touch, everything that we choose, and why do we choose it? Each one of us has a different palette, 
right? So that gives you the opportunity that whenever you're going to encounter a customer, a consumer, you should try to encourage that person. What is he going to, you know, try to figure out what type of palette does he like, all right? And once you understand the palette of that consumer, now you can recommend. Now you can really sell, I know exactly what type of spirits, what type of gin, what type of vodka, what type of whiskey, what type of rum, what type of cognac we can choose. Guys, my journey has been incredible, but your journey, it's a start. Because you have to think about and consider it what you do in life. It's wonderful that we are coming in, uh, my God, as a church, right? where we perform. But what I really love this industry about it is the fact that I work with young people like Federico, who can, I can learn from him, he can learn from me, from my experience. It never stops, it's never ending. You know, I've been in this industry now for 56 years and I still love it. And I love it because every day I learn. Today I'm learning about new spirits. Everything that we touch and the, I'm sitting with Russell and Jacob, and it's nice to see that our palate, it's almost equal, right? What we taste, we really start to think about how that person has created his work of art. And we need, should, we need to be respectful. You know, I have created a liqueur, well, several, two, two liqueur. And everything that I do, I try to understand why do I want to create that liqueur? Or why do I think my liqueur is better than others? Doesn't stop to me. It's not up to me to say my liqueur is better than others. It is up to the consumer if he's going to like what I have created. It's I always said, you know, who are we? You know, most of you are in the bar industry, are you? You are, no? Yes. Now start to think about who you are and what you do. Right? We always say that we are artists of work, and we are, really. You're artists because you are able to create your work of art in a drinking format, right? And, uh, and that is wonderful, because that means you are not stopping just to say, I'm going to mix, I'm going to think about it, I'm going to dream before I create something unique. And uh, I always say, you know, when I started this industry, bartender was not considering. You are considerate now. Think about your skill. Think about, you know, who you are. Think about where you can reach. You know, if I start to analyze three people in an industry, a bartender, a chef, and a sommelier, right? Let's start with the chef. A chef, by all means, is an artist of work. Whatever he creates, he will use his plate as his representation of his work of art. So he's an artist and he's a creator. But whatever he does, he does it behind the doors. So he's allowed to do whatever he wants. Nobody can see him, all right? Then you start to think about the sommelier. On, on the old days, sommelier was somebody that everybody was talking about. What is a sommelier? It is a person that has a refined nose, refined palate, and he has an incredible knowledge, an absolutely incredible, what he is able to do. But remember, he is not a creator, it is not an artist. Whatever he does, he has to make sure that he is able to match the food and the wine in a perfect harmony but he is an incredible, knowledgeable person, right? Then he comes to us, bartender, who are we? Well, guys, think about it. Today, bartender is not just like when I start. Today, you are a true artist of work. You are able to create just like what a chef does. You are able to do amazing things in the way of uh, being creative, but also, Think about, you know, different from the chef, everything that you do, you do in front of the consumer. So the bar, I always say, is one of the greatest fears that there is. So the better you act, the more people will come to you. But now let's talk about knowledge. 
right? At one time, in my bar, there were about 20 to 30 type of bottle. Now I have over 600 type of spirits, all right? Think about today, we try, first of all, the vodka, right? How many type of vodka that there is in the market? And why do we choose so many specific type of vodka? Because we need to be able to tell the difference, right? Potato vodka, grain vodka, grapes vodka, you know, it's amazing what you, sugar cane vodka, right? Then you go to gin. Think about before you, you choose to have a specific type of gin, think about the journey on the different type of gin. Saffron gin, right? Uh, floral gin, uh, what a citrus gin, what, whatever you think it is, the big umbrella of the gin. But we know it all. We start to understand what we use. Now think about whiskey, think about cognac. I mean, today I'm reputed to be one of the world leading experts on cognac. I have by far one of the funniest collection of vintage cognac that is in the world. But I'm still learning, right? Think about rum, think about tequila. Now, that gives you the perception and knowledge of what you really are. So different from a chef, different from a sommelier, we are as artistic as and creative as a chef could be. We are as knowledgeable as a wine waiter can, we can be. But we as a bartender today, we could truly say, I am extraordinarily proud to be a bartender and to work with young guys and to able to still be here because we have by far one of the finest knowledgeable about anything that we sell. And I applaud you for that. Thank you. Thank you.